there's, there's an overarching, very important question, and that is, what kind of Jews were up here? And what did the Jewish people think of what they had done? Here, the nation of Israel went to war with Rome in 66, and the second temple was destroyed in the year 70. By the way, uh, Qumran was already destroyed earlier in 68. And here there were nearly a thousand Jews. This is not five or 10 or 50. This was a, a, a city, a village up here that lived here. And they were willing to die rather than become slaves to Rome. What were their belief systems? Well, we know a bit about them. As Yehuda mentioned earlier, we found here the book of fragments of the book of Leviticus. There could be no doubt that there are fragments that just never survived, or that monks who had been here centuries earlier had already stolen, certainly. But the fact that they would have the book of Leviticus, which means that they were deeply committed to the priestly order and to remaining pure, and after all, where would you find the laws of purity, you'd find it in Leviticus, and that's why here you find a mikvah, a place of immersion, a perfectly kosher mikvah according to traditional Orthodox Judaism. This is very important. You're going to hear terms like Pharisaic Judaism. These are terms that are old terms, but they all mean Orthodox Judaism. In terms of what they believed, these were completely Orthodox Jews. However, the question is, did they do the right thing? Here they were. Did they do the right thing to commit suicide, kill their own families, and then commit suicide rather than become slaves of Rome? And the film we saw inside, if you remember, the professor asked, the narrator, what would you do? And that's how the film ends. And it seems to end on a somehow, some sort of conundrum. And I can almost ask you, what would you do? Would you kill your own children? Would you kill your own family? Just not to be slaves of Rome? No, I want to say this to you before I give you the answer in Jewish law. Whenever I teach history, the most difficult thing for me to do, or whenever I study history, the most challenging element of studying history, you, the books are available to all of us. The difficulty is to put ourselves in their place. It's impossible. It's not possible for Yehuda or I or any one of us to imagine what the world looked like the world view was like what it, the terror of the Romans that wreaked upon the Jewish people. We can't possibly put them ourselves in their place, but we do have the literature. The Talmud never mentions Masada at all. It's never discussed. However, the Talmud discusses similar types of situations where you had breakaway groups. They were what would be like ultra-nationalist groups, maybe like crazy hilltop. The point is, these are completely orthodox, observant Jews, but they believe that no matter what, we can't be slaves. It's better, in America, we used to say, I used to say, this is what we were told, it's better to be dead than red, which means it's better that we should die than have to become, than the Soviet Union would invade the United States and this was something that people talked about. What happens if the Soviets invaded the United States? There was a film called America, spelled with a K. And that was the whole thesis, what would you do? So it's important to understand that in Jewish law, they did the wrong thing. It's very important. I'm very grateful that I'm able to be a part of this process of you coming here to the Holy Land. For each and every one of you, this means the world to me that you're here. But I want you to know that coming here to Masada is not happy for me. It's sad. Because in Jewish law, in the eyes of God, what they did was wrong. 
The Romans were not forcing the Jews to abandon their religion. In fact, if, if we didn't have these other problems, Rome recognized Judaism officially as a recognized religion of the Roman Empire. And Jews were free to express their religion. And in fact, they were given special uh, dispensations, special, for example, normally if you lived in the city, you had to give your money, donate money to the temple of your town. You couldn't send to another temple, another city. But Jews were exempt from this. The Jews who lived in Rome were allowed to send their money here to the land of Israel to support the temple that was here. It's a great tragedy, and it's beyond the scope of Masada to discuss how, what went wrong between the Romans and the Jews because it really didn't have to happen. They were talking past each other. But one thing is very important. The Jews were always a very durable nation because we were able to adjust ourselves to almost any situation. And we were able to survive in the Islamic world and do very, very well. And, and relatively speaking, we were able to flourish. And it would have, in Jewish law, what they did was completely wrong. If the Romans would have allowed the Jews, yes, the Jews would have become slaves. They would have been shipped down to Egypt. And from Egypt, they would have been shipped all over Europe. Many of them probably would not have survived, but they were allowed to put on tefillin every morning. They were allowed to keep Shabbos. They weren't, the Romans didn't do to the Jews what the Christians did that forced the Jews to convert or forced the, if they don't get baptized, they have to, that wasn't the case. The case here was you, you are a slave of Rome, but a Jew can keep on living as a Jew. As long as that was the case, the Jews had no right to commit suicide. So I want you to know this is a, I, I do caution you always, always, always to remember I, and that we can never, never put ourselves exactly in the situation they were in, in the mental worldview they were in, the brutality. This land really is, in a sense, it's very deceptive, meaning, it's so peaceful. You've all been here already. We're halfway through our tour. You never felt fear for one moment. You never felt safer in your life. Any one of you would walk the streets. So it's very deceptive to understand because it's hard to realize how violent and horrible this time was. And the second temple's destruction was much worse destruction the second. So I do want you to know that in Jewish law, this what they did was forbidden and Someone asked me how many times I've been up here to Masada in my life. I don't really know the answer. I don't know. I don't know if it's 30 times or 50. I just don't know. I have no idea. But each and every time, I feel sad. It is, this is a very striking place. It's fascinating as a student of history, but I am much more, my Judaism is much more important to me than, than my interest in history. And the first, the only time Jews were allowed to commit suicide, there was such a thing, and that was when the Crusaders. When the Crusaders came from, at first the Jews weren't exactly sure what would happen when the first crusade came in 1099 into Jerusalem. They, they knew it was horrible, but by the second and third crusade, Jews knew that they were gonna to be tortured. That means they weren't gonna to be told, like in Spain, you have to leave or become a slave will convert you. They would torture Jews until they con converted to Christianity, until they got baptized. Well, so called, that just, well, just right so let me just for a moment. So therefore, under those circumstances, Jews, for example, in England, who whole cities committed suicide in Northern England, rather than become Christians, in Jewish law, they did the right thing. They converted because they felt that they would almost certainly not be able to withstand the tortures of the t Church of the Crusaders, and they would submit and worship idolatry that by becoming Christians, and then it is better to die than be a Christian. But here this wasn't the case, so I want you to know that. There's one other point I should share with you. Um, I know we're going over to the other side, but I'll, I'll share this with you right here. So. The ramp wasn't here, as you can imagine. This would be an impossible place to put for the Romans to put the ramp. 
but the ramp was on the other side. Maybe we should walk there, and I just want to point out something to you, a little bit about Josephus. So, do any of you have any questions about... King Saul, is he, did he do the right thing by killing himself? Yes, because in that case, he wouldn't prevent a chil Hashem. Then I'll give you just a scenario in Jewish law quickly, because, but just to know this, if, if, um, if somebody says to you, eat pork or I'll kill you, so you have to eat pork. There's only three commandments that a Jew has to be ready to die. Not just a Jew, but actually a Ben Noach. Any child of God has to be ready to die rather than violate. But if someone says, murder him or I'll kill you, you have to say, kill me. Uh, if someone says, worship idols or I'll kill you, you have to do that. If someone says, do you have to eat pork or I'll kill you, so the answer is... You can eat the pork. Oh, 100%, eat the pork. So let's say uh, you, you're starving to death, you need to eat, yeah, you're allowed to, only under those conditions. But let's say somebody says to you, not that you're allowed to eat, that, that eat pork or I'll kill you. Whatever someone says to you, declare that it's permissible to eat pork. And if you don't say that, I'll kill you. So then that's a chil Hashem. Then you're denying God. And then you have to allow yourself to die rather than say that it's permissible to eat pork, rather than say that Tanakh has been corrupted, as unfortunately many people do say. That's absolutely forbidden. You have to give your life for that, because that's a chil Hashem, that's a desecration of God's name. The Romans weren't calling upon the Jews to do that. The, the, the Christians, strangely, they were persecuted by the Romans for their religion because they weren't recognized as an official religion. Judaism was widely respected by the Romans because of our antiquity. Anyways, I think, let's move across, because I think across is where is the map.